Hi everybody, it's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my video today. Um, our video today is called How to Make the Dog Lose Weight. And we are on my website, PeopleLovingAnimals.com. And we're going to use this article on my, my website called How to Make the Dog Lose Weight. Dog Obesity is More Dangerous Than You Think. We're going to use this article kind of as the template for our video, just to kind of guide us through so that I don't forget to tell you anything and that we can follow kind of a step-by-step -step process. Uh, in the description box for this video, I'm going to give you the link uh, for this article. So don't feel like you have to try to follow along with this article in the video. Like I said, I'm just using this as a template. You are going to be able to click into this article and read the whole thing and click the links in it and so forth if you want to. Um, so let me tell you what to expect. In today's video, uh, I'm going to talk about... Um, Number one, the dangers of dog obesity. Um, we're going to, I'm going to talk about how to determine your dog's ideal weight. How much should they weigh? We're going to talk about how to weigh your dog. Um, we're also going to do step-by-step -step tips, step-by-step -step things that you can do to make the dog lose weight. Now, at the end of the video, if you'll stick with me, I'm going to have a free gift for you. So again, thanks for watching, and I hope you get some good information out of this. Um, now, first of all, let's talk about let's talk about dog obesity. Um, your dog being overweight is is probably more serious than you think. You know, people think it's fun to feed their dog and give them treats and the dog is always gluttonous and they always want to eat everything. They're always begging for food and it is fun to share food with your dog and everything. But, you know, being overweight is just as dangerous for dogs as it is for humans. It comes with a whole lot of um, diseases and health issues and, um, you know, it really negatively affects their quality of life and it shortens their life okay just like it does with a person so it is it is important um, to keep your dog at a healthy weight uh, dog obesity and if you go into this article you're going to be able to click this link to it to a more advanced uh, article about dog obesity but it is one of the fastest growing health issues for dogs today uh, and like I said we're gonna we're gonna help you here to we're gonna help you to fix this we're gonna help you to um, help your dog to lose weight dog obesity statistics um, approximately one-third of adults in the United States are, are obese and the trend seems to be worsening and veterinarians are noticing a similar increase in dog obesity and just like with people dog obesity can cause various health problems such as diabetes diabetes diabetes, hypothyroidism, um, heart disease, cancer, all of it, just like with people. And like I said, it does negatively affect the quality of their life. And uh, you know how it is, if you're overweight, you don't feel good, you don't sleep good, you don't eat good, you don't have good digestion, uh, you can't do things, you run out of energy, you get tired all the time. I mean, you know, if you've ever been overweight, you know, it really, um, it lowers the quality of your life and it literally lower, it literally sh shortens your life, okay? And it's the same thing for dogs. Now, how do you determine your dog's ideal weight? Okay, there's a couple of ways that I'm going to show you here. Uh, first of all is you should be able to feel your dog's ribs. Okay, now you don't want to, you know, look at your dog and you can see all of their ribs. If you can like see their ribs when they're just walking by, they're probably too thin. Um, but when you put your hands on your dog's ribs you should be able to feel the ribs if you can't then there's like too much fat and you can't feel them same with us if you can't feel your own ribs you're too fat <laughs> you know so you should be able to feel his ribs the other thing i want to show you is if we look here this I find very helpful. This is how you can determine whether your dog is overweight. If you know, your dog should have an hourglass figure, okay? It should look like a figure eight. See this dog? Now this dog is underweight, this dog is ideal weight, and this dog is overweight. So not to insult your intelligence, but let's just go over this for the sake of clarity. This dog, you can see a very um, pronounced figure eight, uh, you know, hourglass figure figure here, hourglass shape, but he's a little too thin. You see how his belly is kind of sucked in on either side here. This dog is a little bit underweight. 
This dog, and I hope you can see my cursor here on these pictures, this dog is in an ideal weight where you can still clearly see the figure eight. You can clearly see the indentation here at his waist. You can clearly see the hourglass shape, but he's got some meat on his bones. He's a healthy, healthy dog. He's got the shape he's supposed to have, but he's not too thin. This dog is clearly overweight. Now, as you can see, there's no figure eight here. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hourglass figure here. Now, if your dog is just straight down like this, a straight line on either side, and there's no figure eight going on, then your dog is too wide. He's too he's too big, too fat. And then even worse would be if your dog's if you can see my cursor here, if your dog's belly is protruding even you know on either side then obviously the dog is too fat. So hopefully this picture, if you stand over your dog and you look down. You know, if they're round and they don't have any figure eight at all, they don't have any hourglass shape at all, like this dog, then they are overweight. All right. This is what they should look like. You should be able to see the hourglass shape but not too pronounced. This one, it's too pronounced. It's a little too extreme and this dog is a bit too thin. So I just wanted to share this picture with you because I think it's a really good way for you to be able to just look at your dog and say, you know, what, what's he look like, you know? Um, and like I said, if, if you can feel the ribs, um, you gotta be able to feel the ribs, but again, not too extreme. Uh, okay, how to weigh your dog. There's a couple of ways to weigh your dog. Um, first of all, you can purchase a dog scale. In the article, I give you a link, and this is to Amazon, and it's just a variety of different um, dog scales for different size dogs, different price range. You can buy a dog scale, but if your dog, or you can also take them to the vet. Um, in any vet's office, you know, you'll be able to walk in and say, would you mind, you know, I'm helping my dog lose weight. You know, it should be your vet's office. They should know who you are, but um, if you, if you, if you and your vet decide that your dog needs to lose weight, I don't think that vet would have any objection to you coming in once a week, once every couple of weeks and weighing the dog real quick for you. That's another option. The other option, if your dog is small enough for you to pick up, even for a couple of minutes, then one of the easiest ways is for you to just use your own bathroom scale, pick up the dog, get on the scale, and then get off the scale, put the dog down, weigh yourself and subtract the two weights. Now, again, not to insult your intelligence, but we'll just talk for a second to clarify that. Let's say that you and your little dachshund, you pick up your dachshund, you get on the scale and the two of you together weigh 120 pounds. All right. You get off the scale, you put the dog down, you get back on the scale yourself and you weigh 100 pounds. Well, you subtract those two and that means the dog weighed 20 pounds. OK, so if you can pick up your dog even long enough for the two of you to stand on the scale and for you to look down and see how much you weigh together, then you can just take that weight and subtract from it how much you weigh. And that tells you how much the dog weighs. Now, you don't want to obsess. Um, you don't want to. Um, obsess over your dog's weight. You don't want to, you know, starve them because they're not losing weight fast enough or, or anything like that. I'll, I can't say it enough throughout this video. Don't be extreme. Don't take too much food away from your dog. Don't expect too much exercise out of your dog. You have to be reasonable. Slow and easy, slow and steady, just like with humans, is healthier way to lose weight. It's an easier way to lose weight. And it's the way to lose weight that's going to make your dog happier. It's more pleasant to lose weight slowly and kind of adjust to new eating or exercise habits slowly. So don't obsess too much about the weight on the scale, just, but you can weigh your dog and you can actually, um, you know, just get a little notepad and pad and keep track of their progress, just like you would for yourself. Now, how to get my dog to lose weight. Now, the first steps um, in helping your dog to reach his ideal weight is determine the amount of food he needs daily um, to provide enough nutrition for the dog and enough fuel for the dog's activities, but not too much. Now, it's really critical for you to determine what's your dog's activity level, okay? If you have an old dog and they just lay around on a big pillow all day and they really don't do much, then obviously that dog doesn't need as much food. It doesn't need as much fuel because he's not burning it off and he doesn't need a ton of fuel, uh, you know, because he doesn't have a lot of activity. But if you have a dog who is active and young and is playing with the, in the yard with the kids all day and is chasing a tennis ball constantly and going for walks and all this kind of stuff, then obviously that dog needs more food. And, you know, it's the same with people, you know, any 
principles you would apply to a person, you would apply to a dog. Like, for example, if I go for my regular daily walk, you know, I eat a certain amount of food each day. But if I get on my bike and, and I go for an intense bike ride, I'm going to be hungrier. I'm going to need more food to, to fuel that. Do you see what I mean? Even if I am trying to lose weight, you still have to have enough fuel to to fuel your food, to fuel your activities. So keep in mind how, how active is your dog? And then realize if your dog is more active, like say if, uh, say Monday through Friday, they lay around the house all day while you're at work. Okay. They don't need as much food then, but if, if on the weekend you throw them in the car, you take them to the lake and they chase the stick in the lake all afternoon, they need more food that day. Okay, so just like with people, keep in mind, what's your dog's activity level? And is he eating enough to sustain his activity level? Or is he eating too much that he's not burning this off? He's not doing anything to burn this off. So pay, again, pay, pay close attention um, to what your dog's body looks like, like we talked about a little earlier. Um, how to prevent dog obesity through exercise. Now, this is... Um, uh, you know, it can be a serious topic, especially if you have an older dog. And just like with people, you do have to be careful. And again, um, use caution. Increase exercise a little at a time. Don't tie your dog to your bike and take him out on a three-mile bike ride. If, do you know what I mean? Like, please be careful, especially if you have an elderly dog. Um, increasing your dog's activity level is easy and it's fun. You can simply incorporate some regular exercise into your dog's daily routine, and uh, it'll help him to lose way. You can take him for a walk around the block. You can take him to visit a local dog park, let him play with other dogs a few minutes. You can toss around a ball or a frisbee. Even 10 minutes would, would make a difference. Um, you can play a little game of tug of war with one of their toys in the living room each night. You know, just pick up the toy and do a little tug of war, five, 10 minutes. It's exercise. You know, it's exercise for the dog. He's burning calories. Um, swimming is a great way for dogs to get exercise. But again, be very careful. Don't ever leave a dog unsupervised in the pool. Even if your dog Dog can swim. Don't ever leave him alone in the pool. And keep in mind, you know, if that dog's in the pool too long and he gets exhausted, please be careful with the dogs around around swimming. Um, getting your dog moving is the best way to help him manage his weight. Uh, and, you know, it enforces your bond with your dog. You know, dogs love nothing more than to spend time with us. They love us. They want to spend time with us. They are happiest when we are paying attention to them. So if you're taking your dog for a little walk every day or you're getting on the living room floor and wrestling with them a little each night or you're throwing a tennis ball around or you're just picking up one of their toys while you're watching Netflix and you're just letting them tug on a little tug of war, this means the world to your dog. And, you know, happiness levels do have a, a lot to do with, with health, you know, whether it's people or animals, you know, if they're happy and joyful, they're just going to be a healthier dog, you know, so it's, it's all good. And exercising with your dog can also help you in your weight loss efforts. If you're trying to lose weight and you take your dog for a walk every night, guess what? You're walking you too. <laughs> And also just the health benefits, the health benefits of exercise. It fights depression. It fights heart disease. It fights cancer. You know, all of that is true for us, too. So it's it's good for you, too. Uh, and like I say, always remember to take your dog's age, health, and physical abilities into consideration when you're exercising. Uh, if a dog is panting, that's okay. But if they're really gasping and um, if they appear desperate in any way, if you're out on a walk and they keep sitting down or if they seem to be desperately trying to get back home, if they seem to be pulling you in the direction of home, make sure you're paying attention. Uh, you know, make sure that the dog is not panting too much. Make sure that you're not you know, over exercising them because not only can it be dangerous, just like it can be for a person, but it's not comfortable for them. And you want the exercise to be fun for them. You want it to be enjoyable for them and you want it to be healthy for them. And if they're constantly over exerting their, themselves, you're going to be causing health problems instead of solving or preventing health problems. So be careful. You know, is your dog young? Is he old? Does he have arthritis? Does he have any health conditions? Uh, you know, again, if you're exercising your dog, do make sure that you're feeding him enough. You know, make sure he's getting the nutrition that he needs. Um, Keep it within his, his comfort level, the exercise. And, you know, the best rule is to just increase it a little time. You know, if you have a big, fat beagle, 
who can barely make it across the room because she's so fat. And she walks across the room and she has to sit down and pant for 10 minutes before she can make it back. Do you see what I mean? You need to be careful with that dog. That's not a dog that's going to make it around the block. Do you see? You might want to take her, put her on a leash and walk her out to the mailbox and back. That's it. That's her little exercise routine for today. You go to the mailbox and back. Okay. And then maybe you go to the mailbox and back twice, or maybe you go two mailboxes or do you see what I mean? Little at a time, a little five minute game of tug of war in the living room, little things at a time until that dog can build some stamina. You know what they say? Like for people, if you're walking or you're jogging or really any exercise, but jogging, for example, they say, if you are breathing heavy, that's okay but you should be able to speak. And if you can't speak because you're breathing so heavy, then you're overdoing it. Okay. So I think that's just like a really good way to kind of judge. I know the dog's not going to talk, but you know what I mean? Like that's a good way to kind of get a picture in your head is how much is too much, you know, is, is the dog okay? <laughs> you know, um, again, keep the activity within their comfort level. Tips to help your dog lose weight. Now, this is my little Tazzy. This is my little uh, wiener dog, Taz, Tazzy. Now, sadly, Tazzy passed away several years ago. I had her for six and a half years. And uh, when you, if you go around my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, you'll see a lot of pictures of her, a lot of stories about her because she had a lot of health issues. She just had a lot of stuff going on. But when I took this picture, this is very cute. I had set this basket of warm laundry. It was warm from the dryer. And I had set this basket in the living room. And she jumped in there and I caught her and there she is. But as you can see, Tazzy was overweight. And I remember she was, she was coming up on 19 pounds in this picture. Now the vet had said that about 15 pounds was a normal weight for her. And I agree that 15 pounds was, was an ideal weight for Tazzy. She looked good at um, 15. She looked good at 14. Uh, 14 probably was more of an ideal weight, but I liked her at 15 because I, I just thought it was a good, healthy weight and easy for her to maintain. But this was right around the time when I decided this dog needed to lose weight. And that's when I started to research how to help her lose weight. And we did achieve Tazzy losing weight and getting down to her ideal size. So all these tips that I'm giving you in this article is exactly what I did with Taz. But here she is at about 19 pounds. <laughs> And as you can clearly see, there's no hourglass going on here. There's no hourglass figure going on here. Okay, there's no figure eight. You can see the dog is clearly overweight. Uh, and it's not good for her. You know, it's not good for her. You know, you can see the gray in her face. She was getting older. And so it, it was um, it was important that, that she lose weight. And luckily, we were able to achieve it. Now, one of the ways we did do that was we substituted her treats with low calorie treats. Now it turns out dogs love vegetables. So instead of milk bones, pepperonis, all those store-bought dog treats, which by the way, I've got a bunch of crap in them that your dog shouldn't even be eating. Um, just like for people, they, they put so much crap in our, in our food that is not even, you know, not even good for us and not even supposed to be digested, you know, but um, so instead of all those sorts of treats, try giving, Carrots, green beans, pieces of apple, broccoli florets. Uh, Tazzy loved carrots, um, and I would got by those those little miniature carrots, and I would actually chew them up um, in little pieces before I would give them to her because you don't want to put anything, you know, hot dog shape into a dog's mouth. You don't want to choke on it. Do you see what I mean? So the baby carrots, she was a dachshund, so it wasn't really a good idea to hand her that whole carrot because if she tries to swallow it whole, you understand. But she loved the carrot. Most dogs do like those little miniature carrots and they're good for their teeth too. And they're good for digestion. They're, they're so much better for the dog. They're so much healthier for the dog. And I found, I had two different dogs, Tazzy, and I also had a Boston Terrier named Cagney. They both loved vegetables. I would chop up an apple. I would give them apple chunks. I would chop up broccoli. I would give them a little piece of broccoli. Um, they also had green beans. Now Tazzy loved peas and carrots. Now be careful if you're using canned vegetables because canned vegetables tend to have a lot of sodium. So you can either get canned vegetables that are low sodium or use frozen vegetables or use, you know, just plain uh, real vegetables. 
Uh, but they, they, both these dogs, uh, my Boston Terrier named Cagney and, and this wiener dog named Tazzy, they both loved vegetables and they would eat carrots. They would eat uh, green beans. Tazzy loved peas and carrots. So she loved peas and carrots. So I would just put a few in a dish for her. Another thing that Tazzy loved was blueberries and blueberries have enormous um, health benefits for people and for dogs. Um, and so I would just get a little, you know, a few blueberries, have them in a little dish in the fridge and, and I would just reach in the fridge and give her one. And the other thing too, is if you have vegetables cut up in the fridge for the dog and you're reaching into the fridge to give them a treat, they think it's better. You know, they're excited. You're getting something out of the fridge for them. Do you see what I mean? Uh, the other thing you can do is you can take just some of their dog food and put it in a little container and then just shake that up and present it as a treat. They don't really know any different. They don't really care. They just they want they just want something. They want to eat something. They want your attention. A lot of the joy for an animal and getting a treat is not the treat, but it's the attention from you. Okay, so keep that in mind too. Um, but switching from dog treats to vegetables is a really great way to help your dog lose weight, and they like it. Um, Cardio. Uh, one of the things that we did to help Tazzy lose weight was we would do nightly cardio. At this time, when the, when I took this picture and Tazzy was overweight, my husband and I would get on um, either side of the living room floor and we would roll a tennis ball back and forth between us with her chasing it. We would let her get a little winded, but then we would stop when it seemed like she was getting too tired. So just getting her heart rate up and getting her little body moving for a few minutes each night in the living room, it helped a lot and it helped her to lose weight. But again, we had to do it within her comfort level you know if the dog's a little winded that's okay but if they're really panting and they're really struggling if they're trying to sit down if they're trying to lay down then you need to stop so again we did it within her comfort level but um you know she was able to do it and, and we did a little cardio with her every night and it helped her to lose weight now, uh, don't get mad when I say this, because a lot of people get mad when you say, don't give a dog table scraps. Well, you know, at the same time, I'm telling you to feed them vegetables. Can dogs eat people food? Yes, they can. They can eat fruit. They can eat vegetables, blah, blah, blah. But here's a couple of things. First of all, in this article, you're going to see a link, foods that are poisonous for dogs and cats. Um, and I'm going to also give you the link to that article in the description box of this video, because I have written a full animal on my website, uh, a full article on my website about foods that are toxic for dogs and cats. And please go and read it because you think you know you don't. There's a lot more than you think, okay? So that said, um, don't give your dog table scraps. Do not put a plate of spaghetti down for your dog. You know, just don't do it. It's not good for them. It's not what they're supposed to eat. You know, it's it's not healthy for them. They can't digest things the same as we do. You know, you really need to be giving them a healthy dog food, um, fruits and vegetables, things that are good for them. Um, don't make a meal out of it. If you want to give your dog a little bite of something you're eating, that's okay, but just a bite. Don't make them a plate. Okay, don't make them a plate. Don't put all the leftovers. I hate when people treat their dog like a garbage can. It's the end of dinner, they scrape all the plates into the dog's dish. Really? That, that's not okay, especially if it's things like gravy. You know, if you want to share a little gravy with your dog, okay, fine. Put a little gravy, I mean like a tablespoonful on their dry dog food and mix it around. They will be happy. They will be happy. Their food tastes like gravy. They think it's the greatest. They don't need a whole cup of gravy poured over their food. Do you see what I mean? So try to use good sense. And I'm not against sharing with your dog. I've always shared with my dogs. But you, you're the one that has to make the decisions that are best for them. Give them a little piece of something. Or, you know, the other thing, too, is if you sit down with, you know, whatever, say you're, whatever you're eating, you're sitting down with your food, have a little dish of carrots or apple chunks there and give them that. They don't know that that's not what you're eating. Do you know what I mean? Give them one bite of your pizza, one little piece of your pizza, but then their next three bites are carrots. Do you see what I mean? Again, they just want the experience. They just want the sharing. They just want the little snackaroo. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you don't, you don't have to just keep giving them and giving them a bunch of table scraps and food and leftovers and all that stuff. 
So that's one of the other important things. Um, dog obesity is treatable. Um, it's very treatable and the benefits of keeping your dog at a healthy weight are incredible in terms of increasing the quality of his life and his longevity. You'll have your dog longer and he'll have a happier life. He'll have a healthier life. Now here's another important point. Uh, reducing your vet bills. Just like with people, if a dog is overweight, they're going to be at the doctor all the time. You know, people, they're overweight. They have this problem. They have that problem. Before you know it, they're having a heart attack before you know it, they're a type 2 diabetic, before you know it, they need this, they need that, and then they're depressed because they're overweight, so then now they need antidepressants. It goes on and on and on, and you can eventually develop cancer, you know, serious illnesses. The same is true with dogs. So honestly, from a practical standpoint, if you want to save money on vet bills, help your dog to keep at a healthy weight, healthy eating, healthy exercise, and be at a healthy weight. It'll, it will greatly reduce your health, uh, your medical vet bills for the dog, especially as they get older. Uh, and it, you'll see in here, uh, I've highlighted there is an article for reducing your vet bills. It's just an article that I wrote about getting help with vet bills if you need it and managing your vet bills. Um, but, you know, a healthy dog doesn't have to go to the doctor all the time. And they don't have a bunch of health issues. So like I say, just for practical reasons, help your dog to lose weight and be a healthy weight to save yourself the money on the vet bills. Um, if you have any more helpful hints on helping your dog lose weight, please comment below the video. I really would um, like it if you would. You can email me. There's uh, My email is here in the article. Uh, you can comment on this video. You can go into this article, comment on the article. Um, please feel free to tell me what kind of dog you have. Tell me what kinds of things you're doing. I would love it if you would come back and tell me which things you tried and maybe kind of share your dog's progress with us. Um, that would be great and it would help everybody who watches this video. Uh, now, a couple of things before we end. Um, first, uh, like I said, in the description box of this video, I'm going to give you the link for this article so you can read it. I'm going to give you uh, the link to to um, this. Uh, it's actually, I made a YouTube video out of it. You can go to the article from here or you can go to the YouTube video, Foods That Are po uh, Poisonous for Dogs and Cats. Um, I'll give you that information. I'll also give you the link to buy a dog scale. Uh, if, if you want it, the link will be in the description box. And as I promised, um, there is a free gift for you. In the description box, you're going to see a note that says, click here to grab your free gift. You sign up for that with your email, and I'll give you a free dog training manual. It's um, written by someone named Doggy Dan. He owns an online dog training website called The Online Dog Trainer. And I promote his website on my website because I do think he's like one of the best dog trainers trainers there is and his dog training is affordable and it's great and I I always recommend him but um, so your free gift it's an ebook or it's a PDF it's a dog training manual written by doggy Dan so you can go ahead and sign up for that now when you sign up for that um, you're giving me your email so you're going to be subscribed to my dog lovers email list and uh, when you're subscribed to that every five or seven days you'll get an email from me and it'll it'll say from people loving animals.com and it'll be either an article that I've written for my website similar to this one um, I've written hundreds of articles for my website on the subjects of dog training um, you know health um, vet bills, puppy training, pet care, all kinds of things. So every five to seven days, you'll either get an article that I've written or you'll get a video. Um, and so you can unsubscribe to that list at any time. Um, but I think you will find it to be valuable because I cover a lot of different subjects having to do with dogs. So go ahead and go, uh, go down to that link and, and sign up and grab your free gift. Um, also, I donate to animal charities. I am an affiliate marketer um, in that the things that I promote on my websites, I do make money on, not all of them, but like, for example, what I do for my people loving animals stuff. Uh, com website, which is what I do for a living, is I research topics regarding dogs and cats, and then I search for products and services that will help people, and then in my articles, I um, I promote those things, and I offer people links to those things. Uh, <clears throat> like, for example, the, the dog training website, I research them.
system. That's the one that I recommend. I became an affiliate for that company. So I do get a commission uh, when you go and you purchase, you know, a dog training uh, program, all these sorts of things. So I do make commissions on it. It's how I earn a living. It's how I'm able to do this People Loving Animals website and YouTube channel for a living. And I donate 10% of all of the commissions that I earn on my website to animal charities. And if you go on the homepage of my website, you will find a list of the animal charities that I donate to. So for that reason, I'm going to ask you for your support. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. It helps the YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to continue to see videos like this. Um, go ahead and subscribe to the Dog Lovers email list by signing up for your free gift. Uh, that helps to support me. And also share with your friends my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, this video, other videos that you find on my YouTube channel. Share my articles. Share my website, share my YouTube channel, um, because every purchase that anyone makes from any part of my website, 10% goes to animal charities. So um, every purchase helps animals. And um, obviously it supports me in being able to continue this. I do have a Patreon account. You'll see a link in the description box. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, support this channel, I would appreciate it so much. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that I haven't covered here. So again, I want to thank you for watching and please keep me posted on helping your dog to lose weight. I would like to know how they're doing. Feel free to comment below. I do read the comments. I will respond and uh, let me know if you need any help, if you have any questions or if you have any other suggestions that you would like to share with people. And I hope your little chubby dog can lose weight and feel better. Uh, and congratulations to you. I love when people love their dogs. I love when people are on my videos because that means that they love their dog enough to to want to be a good pet owner and and really take care of their dog uh so again thanks so much for watching my name is deborah and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com thanks again bye-bye